بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله ان شاء الله تعالى وال we'll talk a little bit about um, the blessed month of Ramadan inshallah waiting for more people to show up so that we can um, uh, this will take us not on, not until Maghrib but inshallah ta'ala maybe just for about you know 30 minutes 45 minutes or so uh, just to have that spirit inshallah ta'ala of Ramadan and getting to uh, getting to know more about this blessed month of Ramadan we're going to talk about some secrets about Ramadan and all the, the as to why we fast, what are the blessings, what are the uh, the merits, and then I will have a question at the very end, something about those whose fasting will not be accepted from. The people who are fasting, or they fasted last year and the year before, and maybe ten years of fasting, ten years of salah, but no, nothing has been accepted from them. Why? Inshallah, later on we'll talk about that. So. First and foremost, once more, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering. Maybe this is as it is brand new. Maybe not a lot of people uh, have heard that we are meeting here today. But this will be, inshallah ta'ala, as every weekend, we will have iftar at this masjid. And then before iftar, we will have this uh, short gathering, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I would like to say Eid Mubarak Sa'id. You will say, no, Sheikh, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, no, Eid Mubarak. Why I'm saying Eid Mubarak? For this particular reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات This is the key about Ramadan, it comes and goes. It comes and goes. And Allah Azza says, Ayyam and Ma'dudat, very specific number of days or time. Before you know it, Ramadan goes. It comes and we're so excited that Ramadan is here, Ramadan is here. And before you know it, it's gone. So this is why I'm saying Eid Mubarak, mark my words. Uh, just like tomorrow, it will be Eid. Where is Ramadan? Gone. This is the case of Ramadan. It's a guest. Beloved guest to all of us, but subhanAllah, the beauty about this guest is that it comes and goes so fast. So this is why we should try to take advantage of these ayyam and ma'dudat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, Kutiba alaykum as siyam, siyam has been prescribed upon you as it has been prescribed on, from of people before you, which means that not only Muslims, not only the Prophet Muhammad salam, Nuh, he ordered his people for, for, to fast. Ibrahim salam, Musa, Isa, Zakaria, Yah, all the prophets before us, or before, they have commanded their people to fast. Kutiba alaykum as siyam. Siyam has been pres prescribed upon you as it has been prescribed for people before you. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And Allah Azza wa has given us the key as to why we're fasting. I'm going to ask you some questions. And I have candies, but I know, I think you're fasting today, aren't you? You guys are fasting today? I normally have my candies, so when, you, when I ask a question and you answer the question, I throw something at you. So I can throw the candy at you, but don't eat it now. You eat it later on, inshallah ta'ala. So... Um, one of the key reasons as to, you know, why we fast. Some people say, like, even at school, at work, some people, they ask that question, why do you Muslims fast? We fast because, why do we fast? Because Allah told us to, you know, this is the, for, you know, the foremost answer, because Allah told us to fast. I pray because Allah told me to pray, you know. So there's something missing there, you know, when you say, I fast because Allah told me to fast. Allah, uh, we pray because Allah. So you're just doing it because of a fear of Allah? Because Allah told me, you know. Uh, but once you actually understand the purpose, the reason as to why we really need to fast, then you will do it with love. Not only for fear, but with love. Love in what you do. Some people say, Akhi, I can't wait for Ramadan to leave. I can't wait to break my I can't wait. Naam. But once you really truly understand as to why we fast, then it will change the whole thing, inshallah ta'ala. This month is a blessed month. This month is really a month of khayrat, month of good, month of blessings, month of barakat. Lots of barakat. Um, 
this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from all the other months, how many months do we have in Islam? How many? Exactly, just like the, the solar calendar, we have a lunar calendar and we have, you know, do you know all these months? What are some of the months that you know of other than Ramadan? Dhul Hijjah. What comes after Ramadan? Shawwal. Ramadan comes, what's after? MashaAllah, Alik. Ramadan, then after Ramadan comes Shawwal, huh? And after Shawwal comes what? Before Hajj comes another month, right? Before Hajj comes, I need to give you something because you're... Can you give me my jacket? Are you fasting today? Okay, good. So I give you something, but don't eat it now, okay? Eat it later. Here we go. After uh, Ramadan, we have Shawwal. And after Shawwal, we have Dhul Qa'dah. And after Dhul Qa'dah, we have Dhul Hijjah, the month of fast, you know, the month of Hajj. So, all these months, no, none of these months are mentioned in the Quran except Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan, Allah mentions it by name. So, when Allah mentions something by name in the Quran, it's for its significance. And also, in this month, all the scriptures, all the books, all the divine books were revealed in Ramadan. Not only Quran, Quran, Torah, uh, the uh, um, Injil, which is the Bible, uh, the Soh of Ibrahim, the scrolls of Ibrahim, uh, Az Zabur, all the divine scriptures were also revealed in this month of Ramadan. Not only Ramadan, or not only the Quran. And also, my brothers and sisters, Another merit of this blessed month, it is the month of as -siyam. It is the month of fasting. And this is why we need to talk about, you know, fasting. It is the month of as -siyam. It is the month of the Quran. It is the month of, of, of Al-Khayrat, of Al-Barakat. In fact, this particular month, all the gates of Jannah are open. You know how many gates do we have in Jannah? Jannah has gates. as jahannam has gates. Jahannam has gates and Jannah has gates. How many gates do we have in, Jahan in Jannah? MashaAllah. You're, you're so smart. Are you married? No? Oh, MashaAllah. <laughs> He's smart. He's smart. MashaAllah. Yes, eight. Eight, eight. eight. And how many gates do we have in Hellfire? There are gates in Jannah, there are gates in Hellfire. In Jannah, there are eight. In Jahannam, we have seven. So there's more gates in Jannah because Allah wants you to enter Jannah more than He wants you to enter her fire. But these gates of Jannah are wide open now in, J in Ramadan. And the gates of her fire are locked down in Ramadan. So that means it's easier for us to do good deeds. It's easier for us to pray. It's easier for us to wake up and pray Fajr. Even those who did not pray Fajr before Ramadan, now they're waking up to pray Fajr. Now they come in actually to the masjid to pray Fajr. Why? Because the ta'at becomes easy, subhanAllah, in the month of Ramadan. It is a month of blessing. The Prophet Muhammad says, with regard to fasting, this is a beautiful hadith. Bukhari Muslim, they narrate, or they report that Prophet Muhammad says, من صام يوما في سبيل الله بعد الله بينه وبين النار مسيرة سبعين خريفا. Who ever fast one day في سبيل الله. Imagine if you were to fast. The Prophet didn't say Ramadan. He just says who so ever fast one day for the sake of Allah. Allah سبحانه وتعالى will distance between him and hellfire. Will prevent him from entering hellfire. The distance of seventy years. Seventy years. If you were to only fast one day. Imagine fasting the whole month of Ramadan. If you're to fast only one day and the, and the merit and the ajal that you get, the reward is to be saved from hellfire, the distance. By the way, Prophet Muhammad was sitting one day with the Sahaba. With, you know who are the Sahaba? What do we call Sahaba in English? Companions. companions of the Prophet, right? Of the Prophet Muhammad, his companions, his friends. We call them in Arabic Sahaba. Or in, you know, if one is Sahabi, plural is Sahaba. So, and, what, and then they heard a drop. They heard something drop, like, they heard something drop. And then the Prophet asked them, did you hear this sound? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, we heard this sound. He said, this is a rock that's been falling for 70 years. Today, it just has reached the bottom of hellfire. 
Imagine something that's been falling and falling and falling. Not for, how long does it take to drop something from the roof there, you know, to the, just maybe a few seconds. So imagine something has been dropping and falling and falling and falling for 70 years. And then it has reached the bottom of hellfire. That's the depth of hellfire. The gates of hellfire will be locked and the gates of Jannah are open in Ramadan. So Prophet Muhammad says, Man sama Ramadan iman and wahtisaban, wufila da huma taqadama min dambi. Whosoever fast Ramadan, believing in Allah and seeking the reward from whom? Seeking the reward from? From? Everybody. From? From Allah. Who's going to reward you for fasting? Allah. So the Prophet says, Whosoever fast, you know, iman and wahtisaban, believing in Allah and seeking the reward from Him, all his sins shall be forgiven. The Prophet Muhammad also says, whosoever qam, whosoever, you know, prays in Ramadan, qiyam, you know, when we do taraweeh, when we do qiyam al-layl, the Prophet says, whosoever does qiyam in Ramadan, iman and wahtisaban, ghufra lahu ma taqadma min dabbih, all his sins shall be forgiven. This is only for this particular month of Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, if they are listening, Allah creates and selects. Did you know that? Allah, he creates and he favors. Allah created, for instance, the heavens, and then He favored the the highest heaven, Al-Fidlaus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the skies, and then He favored the seventh sky. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels, and from the angels, there's so many angels. But Allah favored, you know, Jibreel, Israfil, Mikail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind and from all mankind Allah Azza wa favored the prophets and the messengers and from the prophets and messengers Allah favored five what we call Ulul Azm Ulul Azm five do you know these five who these five are these five prophets that Allah favored you know how many prophets altogether 124,000 prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored Ulul Azm Tilka Rusul Faddalna Ba'dahum Ala Ba'd those are the prophets who favored some over others Nuh Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Muhammad. These are all azm that Allah Azzawajal has favored amongst all the other prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created months, days, years, but amongst the days and months and years, what month did Allah favor? Ramadan. And within Ramadan, Allah still favored some nights in Ramadan. He favored the last ten Nights of Ramadan. And within the last nights of Ramadan, there's one night which Allah has favored. You know it. What is it called? Laylatul Qadr. Do you see how Allah creates and He favors? He creates and He selects? You know, Ramadan is the most beloved. Within Ramadan, the last ten nights are the most beloved. Within the last ten nights, there's one night, which is called the night of the power. Allah creates and He selects. Allah created mountains. And from all the mountains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the month of Arafah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, He created uh, uh, masajid and mosques, and Allah Azza wa favored Mecca, Allah favored Medina, Allah creates and He selects. So this is the most beloved month in the, in the, oh, Allah created days and nights. In nights, Allah favored the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Within days, Allah favored the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Allah creates and He selects. So this is something about how Allah Azza wa favored things just to explain to you a little bit the merits of this blessed month of Ramadan. We don't want to waste our time in this month of Ramadan. You know what uh, Abu Hurairah, have you heard of this man, Abu Hurairah, the Sahabi? No, he's a companion of the Prophet. He's the one who narrated the majority of the hadith, Abu Hurairah. And Abu Hurairah, my brothers and sisters, in Ramadan, he used to, um, and his friends, they used to spend time at the masjid. They used to spend a lot of time at the masjid. So he was asked, why do you spend more time in the masjid in Ramadan? He says, li, li, uh, hatta ahfada siyami. He says, to protect my fasting. To protect my fasting. Abu Huraira lived at a time when there is no fitna like we have here today. If Abu Huraira was to come here today, he would live in the masjid. At that time, he, you know, he used to come in Ramadan and spend a lot of time at the masjid. Why? Because he says, I want to protect my fasting. I don't want to do anything wrong. I don't want to look at anything haram. I don't want to, you know. So if he was to come here today, what would he do? Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu wa Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? He would stay in the mosque all the time. I would, I would, say, I would think so as well. So we need to protect this month. 
because I don't know if I'm going to make it until Ramadan 2023. Nobody knows. Nobody can guarantee that gonna, oh, I'm going to live until 2023. So if I was to know that this is my last Ramadan, I'm going to make sure that I will take advantage of every moment of it. I'm not saying spend all the time at the masjid. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying come to the masjid from Fajr until you know, Isha and then go home to sleep and then come. I'm not saying that. All I'm trying to tell you here is take advantage of these ayyam ma'dudat as Allah calls it in the Quran. Very specific number of days. Try to do as much as you can. And today, inshallah, I will share with you a, a proactive program that should help you maximize your time in Ramadan. What shall I do? From the time I wake up until the time I sleep, you know, a proactive, like a plan, a, a program, you know, that to maximize your, your Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. Um, there is a secret in this blessed month, or in fact, treasures. There's so many treasures. We fast because Ramadan fasting helps us to control our desires. When they ask you at school as to why you fast, you can tell them, you know, you can answer such as, we fast because it helps us control ourselves. It helps us control our desires and whims. You know, let's say here's, I'm thirsty. Aren't you thirsty? You guys not thirsty, just me? I'm, I'm thirsty. I work out. Do you work out in Ramadan, you guys? I work, you were like, oh, you're my man. You know, we work out. So I'm, fat, I'm thirsty now, but here's water, drink. I cannot drink. Why? My, my desire, my whims, I want to drink, but I cannot drink. What time is Maghrib? Maghrib is at 7.50, right? You come to me at 7.49, even you, 7.49, and I say, here, drink. You say, no, I can't. Why? It's, it's, you're thirsty. Yeah, I'll drink. He says, no. Why not? It's, it's, it's 7.50. He says, it's okay, 7.49. It's all right, 7.48 is okay. You drink, eat. No, 7.50. Why? Because Allah said so. You control. Those of you who are married, you married or happy? Married or, you see my question? Are you married or happy? <laughs> you said married. <laughs> no, that was a tricky question. Huh? Are you married or happy? He said, I'm married. And now because his wife, she's listening, he says, I'm happily married, you know, because he knows he wants to go back home and, 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 and sleep happily ever after. And he, he wants to wake up and, you know, and yes, yes, yes. So you're smart. I know. Okay, good, good. <laughs> So, sometimes, you know, your spouse is next to you and you feel like you want to be intimate with your spouse. I'm trying to choose my words. Uh, but you're fasting. You have that need, but you can't do it. Why? Because you're fasting. Fasting teaches you that control. You know, we tend to, oh, I want this, let's grab this. I want that, grab this. I want, you know, the, the thief, he wants to steal this. He want, a bird. You know, we don't care. You want to, but what makes us different? Not only as Muslims, what makes us different? This month teaches us to control yourselves and desires. Why we fast? One reason is, you know, learn to control yourself and your desire. Brothers and sisters, we fast because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Do you know that? Allah loves us. As-siyamu li wa ana ajzi bih. Allah Azza wa says in the Hadith Qudusi, Siyam is mine and I reward for it. Salah is for Allah. Hajj is for Allah. But Allah didn't say that about Hajj and Siyam. He says, Siyamu li, as-siyamu li wa ana ajzi bih. Fasting is for me and I reward for it. My slave has left, you know, his uh, drinking and eating for my sake. I shall reward him for it. How much Allah Azza loves you. He knows that you're here. And he knows that you're leaving all the uh, shahawat, all the things that you want you know, to do and whatnot. But you came to the masjid and you're hungry. But you are abstaining from food and drinks and intimacy until the day or the time he orders you know, for you to break your fast. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a uh, Allah Azza loves you. This is why we fast. We fast because brothers and sisters, Fasting is a protection. Non-Muslims don't understand. You know that even non-Muslims now, they have clinics. 
in Germany and many places, you know, they have clinics called fasting clinics. A fasting clinic, you don't have to be a Muslim. They teach people to fast. It's a, it's a, it's a process of cleansing. It's a process of detoxing. Subhanallah, they come back and then when you tell them we Muslims, we fast from this time until this time. Oh really, yeah. Why? It is not because to starve ourselves. Some people say, well, to feel what the, non what the poor people are feeling. You know, yeah, okay, to feel what the, non the, the, the poor people are feeling. But also there's more profound meaning as to why we fast. Fasting that the Prophet Muhammad says, Junna is a protection, is wiqaya. It's a protection from, from the punishment of Allah. It's a protection from, you know when somebody, you're not married, are you? And you know when you, uh, uh, for young people, when the Prophet says, you know, uh, uh, those of you who cannot get married, so he tells them what to do. He says, fast. Fasting will help you control that, that, that urge that you have. Are you, are you married? Not you. So when you, and your father, is that your dad? You know, he told him, I want to get married. He says, no, you're only going to marry your cousin uh, Fatima or cousin Fatima, right? He gives you two options. Your cousin, it's the same lady, right, by the way. It's the same one. But he, his father is playing games with him. You either marry your cousin Fatima or Fatima. The same one. Who we're going to bring from Pakistan. Is that true? We're going to ship her. I'm just joking. Um, when you have that urge, that thing that will extinguish that urge is fasting. Help yourself, protect yourself from the, not only the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal, but from even, you know, the evils of yourselves. As-Siyam jannah As-Siyam is another opportunity for you to, for your da'a to be accepted. Then the Prophet says the du'a du of the fasting is accepted. You're all fasting. This is the best time to make du'a when you're fasting. I'm only trying to tell you as the merits of fasting and why we are trying to fast. Because at the very end, I'm going to tell you about those whose fasting will not be accepted. And that is dangerous. And you and I, we need to do something about it. There are certain people who've been fasting, but their fasting has not been accepted. Who are these people? We're going to talk about them, inshallah ta'ala. As-Siyam, brothers and sisters, takfir lil dunub. It's a process of facing and eliminating and forgiving the sins. Who says Prophet Muhammad, hadith which is in Bukhari, as-salawatul khams, the Prophet says, the five daily prayers. وَرَمَضَانِ إِلَى رَمَضَانِ And Ramadan to Ramadan. كَفَّارَاتْ لِمَا بَيْنَهُمَا Takfir al is an expiation to your sins. You know, you pray, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in a very beautiful hadith, he says, you burn and burn in committing sins. تَحْتَرِقُونَ تَحْتَرِقُونَ You burn and burn. And then, فَإِذَا صَلَّيْتُمُ الْفَجْرَ غَسَلَتْهَا and then when you pray Fajr, it will wash off all the sins which you have committed. And then you burn and burn again. Burn and committing sins. There's so many sins. Sins burn you. And then when you pray Dhuhr, it will wipe out those sins. And then you burn and burn again committing sins. And then when you pray Asr, it will wipe out those sins. And then you burn and burn. And then when you pray Maghrib, it will wipe out those sins. And then you burn and burn. And then when you burn and burn and committing sins. And then when you pray Isha, Ghasalatha, it will wipe out all your sins. And then the Prophet says, Thumma tanamun. And then you sleep. Thumma tanamun. Fala yuktabu alaykum shayun hatta tastayqidu. Nothing will be written upon until you wake up. So you go to sleep clean from all the sins. So prayers, the five daily prayers. And Ramadan to Ramadan are also kafara lil dunub is an expiation to your sins this is why we need to fast this is why we love Ramadan even those who don't practice they love Ramadan even those who don't practice they, even those who don't fast they're happy in Ramadan in our countries I don't know about Pakistan and India or you know but in Arab countries in Ramadan night time it's like a night life like you know especially at night after maghrib i don't know is it the same in your countries as well the coffee shops and you know even in saudi arabia people sleep during the day and they wake up during the night everything is 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 up until fashion time until you know and that's when people go back to sleep but you know subhanallah this is that spirit we call it the spirit of ramadan it's a beautiful spirit but it's nice when you combine it with with, with with praying and fasting, of course, and coming to the masjid, that that other that other taste, that other spirit, you know, this is the spirit of Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, one more thing about Ramadan or Siyam, Siyam will intercede on your behalf. Do you understand what that means? Siyam fasting will give shafa'a to you. Will make shafa'a to you on the day of judgment. 
You know what that means? I'll tell you what it means. On the day of judgment, the wrongdoers will be thrown in hellfire. And some of the believers, some of the Muslims, because of their wrongdoings, may be thrown in hellfire. May be thrown in hellfire. Siyam will come. Fasting will come. And Quran will come. Two things will come. Fasting and Quran. Fasting will say, Ay Rabbi, O oh my Lord, لَقَدْ مَنَعْتُهُ الطَّعَامُ وَالشَّهَوَاتِ فِي النَّهَارِ فَشَفِّعْنِي فِيهِ O oh my Lord, I have prevented him from eating and from indulging in shahawat, in desires. O oh Allah, make me intercede on his behalf. Let me make shafa'a to him. And Quran will say, O oh my Lord, I have prevented him from sleeping at night for he used to wake up and pray and read Quran at night. So the Quran will come also and say, Oh Allah, shafi'ni fi, Oh my Lord, intercede on my behalf. Both of them fasting and and Quran will intercede on your behalf to enter the Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. Imagine, this is why you need to fast. So who can share with me? I've mentioned at least four or five key points here as to why we fast. Why should we fast? Why we love Ramadan? Why we love fasting? Why is fasting is so important? I mentioned about four or five. Give me one point. Yes, give me one point. Because Allah loves us and we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we fast? I mentioned them all, it's all gone. Control your whims and desires. It teaches us to control our whims and desires. Naam, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. La, I'm not supposed to do this. No, I cannot do this. I'm fasting. So it's, I'm, I'm, it's not my soul or my desires that are in control of me. La, I'm in control of my desires. That's number two. When, when we fast, yes. Yes, Salam. I didn't even mention that. You know that? I didn't mention. You're so smart. MashaAllah. I'll give you candy. But don't eat. Are you fasting today? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yes. You are. <gasps> you are fasting. MashaAllah. How old are you? 15? Are you 15? 16? 17? How old are you? You're 8? No. And I'm in 9 in Arabic. <gasps> 9 Arabic class? 9 grade. Nine no, grade. Not, I'm not 9 in grade. I'm in 2 in grade. But what Arabic class? You said nine. No, in Arabic calendar. Oh, the Arabic calendar. MashaAllah, the quwwata illa billah. You're only eight. You look like you're sixteen. MashaAllah, here it is. MashaAllah, How old are you? Uh, eight. Eight. You're not married, are you? No. And you? You're not married either, right? Okay. Good people, good people, mashallah, the Let me Allah protect you and bless you and bless your parents who brought you to the masjid and who are, mashallah, disciplining you with this, uh, with this akhlaq, good akhlaq, good morals, mashallah. The, she is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet, salam, the breath of the fasting is more beloved to Allah, azawajal, is, more, is really beloved to Allah, the smell of the fasting person. You know, and the Prophet Muhammad, when he says that Allah Azza says, "Lisaimi farhatan," the one who's fasting has two, two uh, happy moments. The first happy moment is when he breaks his fast, and the second happy moment is when you see the face of Allah, when you meet your Lord, and that is the utmost happiness, more than entering Jannah. More than entering Jannah, once you see the face of Allah, ah. Uh, that is the utmost pleasure and satisfaction in Jannah, is to be able to see the face of Allah. And you know, there's some people who will be able to see the face of Allah twice a day, and there's some people who see the face of Allah only once a day. You, inshallah, you'll be able to see the face of Allah every day, twice a day, inshallah. Siyam will say, I said also, Siyam will intercede on our behalf. Remember that? Siyam will intercede on our behalf on the Day of Judgment. Siyam eliminates or expiates our our sins you know just so you understand some of the merits some of the virtues of fasting brothers and sisters um, how about if we work on the barnamaj to maximize our fasting a program a program a daily program so that i want to be proactive i don't want you to say oh it's like, like a nice talk and then we move on I want to work on, uh, on, a, on a daily program 
to maximize our fasting insha'Allah ta'ala and some of the things that we need to be doing or to ought to be doing in Ramadan insha'Allah ta'ala. Uh, first and foremost, let's start from the very beginning. Let's start from when we wake up in the morning. By the way, here's a question. I'm going to start a new series in this masjid, insha'Allah ta'ala, after Ramadan. I call it Walking with the Prophet. It's not just Sira, it's Sira and beyond, something you've never seen before, because I know. I know. I call it walking with the Prophet. I take the Prophet Muhammad from the time he wakes up until the time he goes back to bed. It's a series. We're going to start that. What is the first thing Prophet Muhammad does when he wakes up in the morning? That's all. That's Not in Ramadan. I'll give this to you just, just because I love you. Just because you're handsome. Here, take this. Here, mashallah. What is the first thing the Prophet... La anta mumkin, you heard me before. You heard me, not you. What does the... What is... This is a true question, huh? This is a serious question. A lot of people don't know. What does Prophet Muhammad do when he wakes up? The very first thing he does when he wakes up. Yes. The dua. He does his dua. He says, Alhamdulillah, Before he does dua. What does he do? The sisters, I don't know if you can hear. I don't know if you... I would love you to participate with us. Our, uh, this is what I had in 2003 when I had uh, my program here at the masjid. You know, we, my, I remember the last program I had at this masjid was the names of Allah. And how to live with the names of Allah. And we had sisters joining us. So we want the sisters also to participate, inshallah ta'ala. What is the first thing Prophet Muhammad does? Thank Allah. Alhamdulillah. Before he thanks Allah, what, is, what does he do? Alayhi salatu salam. Before he thanks Allah. He makes wudu before making wudu. Before make ah, uh, uh? a glass of water, cold glass. How he drinks it? No. Before he drinks that glass of water, yes, yes. He he wakes up. How how I wakes up? That's a good one. You must be you must be. He wakes up. Okay, he's awake now. What does he do after after he wakes up? The first thing Prophet Muhammad does after he wakes up. Can I tell you? Would you like me to tell you? Yes or yes? yes. No. No. I said yes or yes. yes. All right. The first thing he does, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he wakes up, he rubs his eyes. That's what he does. Get, get rid of the sleep, of the tiredness. And then he says what you said. Alhamdulillah. Are you cold or just me? It's cold in here, huh? A little bit cold, huh? And then he says the dua, Alhamdulillah, ladi hiyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. You know? And then, what does he do after that? After he does this, and after he makes the dua, he does one thing. Before he makes wudu. Before suhoor. Siwak. He takes the miswak. And then he, you know the siwak? Right? You know the siwak, right? He does the siwak. So now we're talking about Prophet Muhammad in Ramadan. Prophet Muhammad Ramadan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he comes in, alayhi salatu salam. He goes, he makes his wudu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He changes his clothes. He removes his pijama, whatever he's wearing for, you know, to sleep with. And then he changes his clothes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And he may pray few rak'at, depending if Aisha is awake or not. He goes and he prays few rak'at as qiyam al-layl. We call this qiyam al-layl. And then sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes for suhoor. He lets suhoor until the end. Why does he let suhoor until the end? He said it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, akhir suhoor. You know, for suhoor, try to delay it as, as, as long as possible. As late as possible. But with iftar, try to expedite it as early as possible. Iftar, you know, says, once you hear the Adhan, says, no, let me wait until the Adhan is finished. Once you hear the Adhan, you have to break your fast. This is the Sunnah. But Prophet Muhammad with the suhoor, he would delay it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his suhoor? What did he used to eat in suhoor? Date? We Muslims, we don't date. I'm sorry, no. Do we date Muslims? Dating is haram. Oh, oh I, th I thought you said she says date. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, he eats dates. Okay, okay. I thought you said date. I said, oh, date? We don't date. We Muslims eat dates, but we don't date. Okay. Yes, exactly. But what is? Huh? Cereal. Huh? Cereal? 
Hey, we'll see the yellow, the, the, uh, the what do you call the chat, that, uh, that fruit chat, you know, the fruit uh, Pakistani chat, you know, that uh, would put spices in it, right? You know, that's bid'ahi. Allah made something sweet and you people put spices in it. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> I always say, it's a bid'ah. It's a fruit and you put spices in it. Yeah, and I've never seen something like this before. And I call it bid'ah with all the respect. But I eat it. It's nice. It's different. No. No, no cornflakes, no cereal. He used to eat uh, milk or dates or anything. But today, you know, can I just be sufficed myself with date and, and water? Yeah, that's what the Prophet used to eat, inshallah. But it is something, if it's known in your culture, to eat that food chat or, or, uh, or uh, rice with uh, chicken or bread, huh? samosas or biryanis. Yahi, you know, I remember in this masjid, in this masjid, long time ago, in 2002, 2003. I had a program for the youth. And Zalam Allah khair, the youth, they used to come here, we used to have this program in Ramadan and other than Ramadan, but let's just talk about Ramadan. And then in Ramadan, we used to, they, used to, they used to sleep here during the last 10 nights of Ramadan and stuff. And then what they used to feed us? Biryani. <laughs> biryani for suhoor, biryani for iftar, biryani, one of the youth came to me and said, Sheikh, I dreamt yesterday eating biryani. In my dream, I ate biryani. It's too much biryani, biryani. But if that's the norm, if that's the culture in your culture, be it. If that's what you eat. So you try to delay suhoor until the end. All right. So you eat your suhoor. And then what do you do after that, inshallah ta'ala? After your suhoor, head to the masjid. Make wudu at home. And then head to the masjid. Why should you make wudu at home before coming to the masjid? Why? Why is it better to make wudu at home before coming to the masjid? <laughs> Look what he said. You see, the, the youth, the youngsters, the kids, they speak the truth. He says, because the washrooms at home are cleaner. Yeah, and what he's saying, the washrooms in the masjids are, are dirty. You see, this is how it is. He's, he's speaking the truth. No, the washrooms in, the, in this masjid, alhamdulillah, I, I, I use them twice. And I can, I can assert that they are, mashallah, clean, cleaner than many other places I've seen. But you're right, yeah, because the, the washrooms at home, they're clean. You know, they're clean. No. Why would you make wudu at home before coming to the masjid? It's sunnah, but there's, because some people cannot, cannot keep their wudu, I understand. But it's always better to make your wudu at home and come to the masjid for the main reason is, for every step you make towards the masjid, Allah will give you one hasana. Allah will erase one sin and Allah will elevate you one rank in Jannah. Those who make wudu at home and walk towards the masjid or come towards the masjid. I always say that. I will never come out from home without wudu. This is me. Never. Even if not going to the masjid. I will always try to keep my wudu, you know, uh, at times. It is also something that wards off jinn and shayatin from you. Maybe one day, inshallah, we'll have a talk about this world of jinn. Keeping your wudu at all times, it is something that wards off the shayateen and jinn, keeps them away from you. So you come, you make your wudu, you come to the masjid. Don't come to the masjid when, you know, when the adhan is being made. La, come to the masjid earlier, before the adhan. Why? Masjids are open now, alhamdulillah. Everybody can come to the masjid. You should come to the masjid early. Why? For many reasons. You will get to pray a couple of rakat before you're in the masjid. You will get to hear the adhan and repeat after the mu'adhin. Here's another ajr, another reward. You will get to pray the sunnah of fajr. And the Prophet says, sunnah al fajr, khayran min al wa fiha. The sunnah of fajr, the surah that we pray before, you know, the fajr. It is better than the entire world and whatever it contains. So much so that for the Hanafi madhab, that sunnah, it is considered as wajib for them. It's considered as wajib, but it is sunnah mu'akkada. The two rakat of, of fajr. And then, Another the beauty, you get, you get some time to maybe read some Qur'an. Qur'an al-Fajr, inna Qur'an al-Fajr kana mashhuda. Qur'an al-Fajr is witnessed. So all these beauties, all these virtues, all these merits, because you came in early, versus somebody coming in late, rushing, and by the time he comes in, maybe the Imam is already almost done, or maybe, la, until you are early, so you are taking advantage of all these beautiful, you know, alhamdulillah rewards, and in Ramadan on top of that. So you do that. And then you will have also some time to make dua. Why? Because dua between Adan and Iqama is accepted. You hear the adhan. 
somebody came in late, he missed that opportunity. The Prophet says, the dua between Adan and Iqamah, so if you're here now, and then you're gonna hear inshallah Adan and Maghrib, you still have some time, you can break your fast, and then before the Iqamah, make dua. Because that dua is accepted. Dua between Adan and Iqamah. So imagine all this, and then you get to pray, and then you get to witness Takbirat al-Ihram. Ah, uh, I don't have time. I don't have time. Takbirat al-Ihram. I can just talk one full lecture about tak what's Takbirat al-Ihram. When the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, you're behind him. It's so important. In hadith which is in Bukhari, those who attend the Takbirat al-Ihram, it's witnessed. Angels are there. Allah Azza wa is witnessing all this. Don't miss Takbirat al-Ihram. One pious man, he says to his kids when he was dying, he, he, they were crying, Dad, he says, don't cry, don't cry for me. Alhamdulillah, I have not missed Takbirat al-Ihram for 40 years. The only thing I saw, he says, in the, in the back of the, is the, the back of the Imam. So much so, the back of the Imam, which means he was not praying in the second or third or fourth row. He prayed in the first row. He says, the only thing I saw was the Imam, the back of the Imam, and I never missed the Takbirat al-Ihram for 40 years. So he says, don't, don't cry, don't be sad. So you come in and you pray, Fajr. I'm giving you a program, a daily schedule. You pray Fajr with the Imam. And then you sit, and then you make your dua, your istighfar, your dhikr. Don't just, if you have time, sit in the masjid and make your adhkar. If you don't have time, you have to rush to work, be it. But if you don't have to rush to work, sit in the masjid and make your adhkar. Why? Why? Because there are special angels making dua for you as you're sitting. Allahumma ghafir lahu, Allahumma rahamah. Allahumma ghafir lahu, oh Allah forgive him, Allah have mercy upon him. The more you're sitting, the more these special angels are making dua for you. Brothers, when somebody's going for Hajj al-Umrah, what do you ask him or her? Dua, right? There are special angels making dua for you when you're sitting after salah. Allahumma ghafir lahu, Allahumma rahamahu. Oh Allah forgive him or her, oh Allah have mercy upon him or her. So you sit. If you have time, sit until sunrise. And then maybe in about 15, 20 minutes after sunrise, you pray that other amazing, beautiful salah, which is called salatu al duha or shuruq, salat al duha salat al awabin You know how many, uh, how many uh, uh, joints do we have in our body? You know joints, these are joints. You know how many joints we have? Three, 360 joints. The Prophet says in hadith, every day you have to pay sadaqah for every joint you have, which means every day you have to pay $360, the least, for every joint you have. The Sahaba says, Ya Rasulullah, how can we? Then the Prophet says, every tasbih is sadaqah, every tahmid is sadaqah, and you say, subhanAllah, sadaqah, Allahu Akbar, sadaqah, la ilaha illallah, sadaqah, alhamdulillah, sadaqah, astaghfirullah, sadaqah, a smile in the face of your brother is sadaqah. Remove that mask. Show me that smile. Aywa. A smile in the face of your brother is sadaqah. He doesn't want to smile. A smile in the face of your brother is charity. Give me some charity. Uh, are you giving me charity? And the Prophet says, Do you want me to tell you something that will uh, equate all this? He says, Turak ad duha. Turak ad duha will be equivalent to all this. So Torah that you pray after, you know, maybe if you go home, you don't have time here, okay. Or you go to work around nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, you can take some break, you know, and pray Torah Ka'ad Duha, or four or six Torah Duha. So that, khalas, then you went back to work, let's say you went home, and we're just talking about your schedule, daily schedule. Take that time, you know, to, pray, to make your Duha. And then Duha comes, because you're fasting. So you're gonna pray your Duha. Make your wudu, pray your dhuhr. And then comes the time, you know, you go back to work, do whatever you need to do. You know, some people, maybe they want to go and take care of their needs or whatnot. Maybe they have some shopping or whatnot. Comes asr. Okay, when it comes asr, make your wudu, then you pray your asr. Most like at the masjid. And then now you need to start preparing for maghrib. Did you read your Quran? You have to do your Quran. You have to do your sabaq. It's very important to do that sabaq. You know, as we call it in Urdu, the sabaq. That, right? The, try to complete the recitation of the Qur'an, the least if you are fluent in Arabic, at least one, twice or three times this month of Ramadan. If you're not as fluent, try to complete the recitation of the Qur'an at least once if you can. 
the least, the least, the least for those of you who are not really fluent or they're having difficulties, have read at least one page of the Quran. Don't not let, do not let one day go without you having that that connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Quran. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you here? Why? Because this is the mother of the Quran. Bring your family and make that dua before breaking your fast. Because dua as you're breaking your fast for the fasting is granted. Have some dates with you if I were you. Have some dates with you. And then whenever you're breaking your fast, try to feed other people. Why? Try to tell them, please take this date and break your fast with it. Why? To get the ajr of those people breaking their fast. If you can. I'm trying to, again, maximize your ibadat. Then if you're at the masjid, great. If you're not at the masjid, you're praying at home, you break your fast. And there is a dua that you, you should say before breaking your fast. What is that dua? A lot of people make mistakes here. What is the dua of breaking the fast? Hmm. When shall I say that dua? Before breaking the fast. La, After you eat. Before you eat, you say Bismillah, and then you eat, break your fast. You break your fast with what? With a date and some water, like Prophet Muhammad used to do. And, or, or that fruit chat, or whatever you like, you can understand. But then the dua should be said after you break your fast. Allahumma dhahab al-dhamma abtalit al-uruq wa tabat al-ajla insha'Allah. You know, and, and, and the dua that you mentioned as well. But you say that after you break your fast. Now that you broke your fast, you can go back and then, you know, you do your salat al-maghrib. And then after salat al-maghrib, you sit down, you know, you know and you, of course you do your, take your dinner and whatnot, and get ready for salat al-isha in the masjid. Get ready for salat al-isha, I'm almost done. One minute, two minutes, inshallah, ta'ala be done. Get ready for salat al-isha, uh, for salat al-isha. Where are you going to pray salat al-isha? At home. Where? At the masjid. You're here already. So you pray at the masjid alone. You bring in who? Try to bring your family with you. All together, we're going to go and pray in the masjid, inshallah ta'ala. You come in, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar. As you're driving, as you're walking, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar. I'm going towards the masjid. I come to the masjid. I enter the masjid with what foot? Right foot. The right foot. What do I say? Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah, Allahumma. Yalla, teach me. What shall I say? Allahumma. Qfir li dhunubi wa ftah li. Abwaab rahmatik. So you entered with dua. Don't forget this. You may say, oh, these are little things. No, they're not little things. Anything you could do in Ramadan to maximize your ibadat, your ta'at, your hasanat. Everything is multiplied. And brothers and sisters, as you come through that door, I think on the left or the right, you tell me. On the left of the door or the right of the door, there are box, boxes of donation, donation boxes. Which, where are they? On the right side. As you enter, if how are you, every day in Ramadan, maybe one, two, three, four, five dollars, every day, every day in Ramadan. You don't, oh, yes, Sheikh, no, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, no, no, I know. I'm going to wait until the night of 27th and do that, inshallah ta'ala. No. Yeah, he, number one, do you know you're going to make it into the night of 27th? That's number one. Number two, Ramadan, every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be saving people from hellfire every night. You don't know. You don't know what's going to be accepted from you. So don't waste an opportunity. Like I said, a dollar or two, but just every day. And let your children see you that you're giving donation. And ask them to put money in the box as well. Teach your children to give sadaqah, to give charity. Because this is the month of charity. This is the month of sadaqah. Prophet Muhammad used to be so generous. But in Ramadan, extra generous. It is the month of ta'at. You come and you pray, Aisha. And after Aisha, you pray Taraweeh. And after Taraweeh, what do you do? You're going to go back home. Tayyib, you go back home. What are you going to do once you go back home? Let's have some fun. What are you going to do after you go back home? Phone? Oh, there's a cricket game. India, Pakistan, they're playing. I have to not, I cannot miss that game, huh? Soccer game. What? La, ya sheikh. When you go back home, try to, eh, what are you going to do? After uh, Taraway, yeah. we go to sleep. Of course you go to sleep, my friend. Of course you go to sleep. If you want to drink like Prophet Muhammad before he used to sleep, maybe he would take something hot, like hot milk, hot uh, leban. You know, you know, we call it leban, you may call it uh, goat milk or milk or whatnot, something hot, and then it will help you in your sleep, inshallah ta'ala. Before you sleep, make your wudu and pray to raka'ah. 
for your tadaqah. You forgot about that. And then what should you recite? I mentioned that yesterday before you go to sleep. Ayatul Ayatul Kursi. Remember that? Ayatul Kursi before you go to sleep. And then you make that dua before sleeping, the dua of sleeping. And then you sleep with what intention? It's very important. What intention do you sleep with? To wake up to pray Qiyam. Because you need to make that intention that you're fasting. So the intention is in the heart. That I'm going to be fasting tomorrow. So you go with the intention. You sleep with the intention to wake up for Qiyam al-Layl, insha'Allah ta'ala. This is a, a schedule or a, ca or, or a program that should help you, insha'Allah ta'ala, to maximize your ibadat in Ramadan, insha'Allah ta'ala. If you have any... any um, Somebody you have not spoken to for a long time. You have any grudges towards someone. Pick up the phone. Wish them Ramadan Mubarak. Talk to your parents. If you have not spoken to your parents, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. If you have not spoken to your brothers or sisters, you have not spoken to your uncles, your aunties, what are you going to wait for? Eid? Try to mend the hearts, insha'Allah ta'ala, in Ramadan. Salat al-Rahim. Give sadaqah, as I mentioned, Qur'at al-Qur'an. The recitation of the Qur'an. I'm going quickly now. Recitation of the Qur'an. Rudd al-Madalim. Anybody that you have wronged, ask them to forgive you in this blessed month of Ramadan. Dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't, you know, always keep your tongue moistened with the members of Allah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilallah, Allahu Akbar. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. For every subhanallah you say, what happens to you? When you say subhanallah, what does Allah do for you? Allah put, plants a tree for you in Jannah. For Alhamdulillah, Allah plants a tree for you in Jannah. Allahu Akbar, Allah plants a tree. So keep on planting trees in Jannah versus backbiting and backstabbing. Plant some trees in Jannah, inshaAllah ta'ala. And try to do iftar al-sa'im if you can. I'm done. Try inshaAllah ta'ala if you have an opportunity to feed someone to break their fast in home or the masjid or whatnot. Try inshaAllah ta'ala to do that because there's so much reward in making someone break their fast inshaAllah ta'ala. Duha. We will end with dua. You can make their own dua. People can make their own dua. You can use almost seven, seven movements for the question and answers. Sure. Assistant. Bismillah. We're going to make dua at the end before Maghrib. Before Maghrib is at 7.50, I believe, according to the, to the calendar there. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions about anything I spoke about here so far? If not, I will ask you questions. Aywa. Ramadan is a month, just like Sha'ban. Like you said, Shawwal is the month like January, February. So Ramadan is the name that Allah Azza chose to name that month of fasting is. Any other questions, inshallah ta'ala, about what I've spoken about so far? Or maybe I did not talk about fiqhi matters pertinent to fasting. I only mentioned about the niyyah. The niyyah of fasting. Some people say, should I make niyyah every night? Or should one have one niyyah be sufficient for the entire month of Ramadan? According to Maliki Madhab, from Morocco, from Tunisia, from Algeria, they adopt the Maliki Madhab. They say that you have, you know, one intention should be sufficient, according to them. But according to the majority, like Al-Hanaf, Al-Shafi'iyya, and then the Al-Hanabila and others, you have to have an intention per night, per fasting per day this is different than the intention for let's say uh, 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 separatory voluntary fasting voluntary fasting you can make that fasting that niyyah even at the whole time even before you break your, before let's say you woke up in the morning uh, and I don't have nothing to eat okay I'm gonna you know I'm, I'm, I'm intending to fast and then you move on but with 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 uh, with siyam with Ramadan the niyyah has to happen at night before Fajr, and you have to make that niyyah to fast. But the niyyah is, shall I utter it? Shall I utter the words? I make my intention to fast tomorrow, uh, Monday. No, the ulama says that niyyah belongs in the heart. The niyyah resides in the heart. The fact that you woke up for tahajjud, the, work that you, the fact that you woke up for suhoor, what does that mean? You woke up for suhoor because you are planning to fast. So your niyyah is built in automatically, inshaAllah ta'ala. Any questions? What do we, why do we fast? Why do we, you spoke to me earlier. Why do we fast? Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum, those of you who are on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. It's been a while, but I'm back. Why do we fast? I just mentioned so many things. Why do we fast? Taqwa. Uh, taqwa. And what's taqwa? 
at taqwa is in the heart taqwa ha huna taqwa to build Allah's consciousness but why do we fast somebody told me because Allah told us to Allah told me to fast is this why we fast why do we fast I mentioned a lot of things today about why we fast naam to control yourself absolutely to control yourself fasting eh what else to get rewards from Allah Azza what else fasting does fasting expiate our sins Fasting expiates kafar dunub, takfir dunub. Yes, fasting expiates our sins. What does fasting do to us on the day of judgment? I will end with this. What does fasting do to us at the end of the, uh, in, the in the day of judgment? At the, in the day of judgment, you, I heard it. On the day of judgment, fasting comes and says, "Oh Allah," and then it does something. What does it do? Hmm? Shafaa intercession shafa'a fasting will intercede on our behalf so inshallah ta'ala may we give you some time maybe to if you want to renew your wudu let's end quickly with a very short dua subhanakallah alhamdulik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah allahumma ya arhamar rahimin ya dhal quwwata al-matin ya rahimad du'afa wal masakin ya ahad ya samad ya alladhi lam yurid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad nas'aluka allahumma bi asma'ika al-husna wa sifatika al-'ula wa nas'aluka bi ismika al-'azam alladhi idha su'ita bi ajab أن تقبل صيامنا وطاعتنا اللهم تقبل صيامنا وطاعتنا اللهم تقبل صيامنا وطاعتنا اللهم يا رحم الرحمين يا ذات القوة المتين يا رحم الضعفاء والمساكين اجعلنا ممن يغفر لهم ذنوبهم في هذا الشهر المبارك اللهم اجعلنا ممن يقوم هذا الشهر إيمانا واحتسابا واجعلنا ممن سوف يصومه إيمانا واحتسابا اللهم يا رب تقبل صيامنا وطاعتنا وقيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا اللهم اعتقنا واجعلنا من عتقائك من النار في هذا الشهر المبارك اللهم اجعلنا من عتقائك عتقائك من النار في هذا الشهر المبارك والله we ask you by every name which we know and we ask you by every name which we do not know we ask you by your greatest name Ismullah al-A'adham by which if you were to be called you shall give we ask you to accept our fasting we ask you to accept our fasting we ask you to accept our ibadat in this month of Ramadan we ask you Rabbil Alameen to increase us in health and wealth we, in, we ask you Rabbil Alameen and we supplicate you Alhamad Rahimeen to make us amongst those whereby their souls are saved from hellfire in the nights of Ramadan Ya Rabbi save our souls from hellfire our souls of our loved ones from hellfire the souls of our parents the souls of our children the souls of our brothers and sisters and the souls of our loved ones, inshallah ta'ala. Ya Alhamad Rahimeen, makes us witness the night of the power. Makes us all witness the night, Laylatul Qadr, Ya Rabbil Alameen, in this blessed month. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inaka amidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim fil alamin inaka amidu majid. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Azzat amma yasifuna wa salamu wa salina wa alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. I kept one last thing until next week. What is it? about those whose fasting will not be accepted. Those whose fasting will not be accepted, you do not want to miss that lecture. And that lecture is scheduled, inshallah ta'ala, next Saturday, bi'idhni Yes, you need to know about that, inshallah ta'ala. Azzaakumullah khair. Barakallahu feekum. Salaam.